During an hour of prayer with some beautiful sisters, the Lord spoke to me in a new way. He showed me a vision of where his bride is at in this very moment, and it wasn't good. But he gave precise and clear strategy of how she can move, how she can break free, and be revived by him. I was able to watch as the Lord painted a series of paintings that built upon each other. It started with a never-ending desert. The sun could be seen at the back of the painting, but it seemed like the sand in front of it was never-ending. It melted into a beautiful sunset layered with hues of pinks, oranges, yellows, purples, and blues. Then the Lord painted a beautiful bride sitting at the vanity. She was wearing an ivory dress with a matching veil trimmed in shiny gold floral lace. I couldn't see her face until he painted her reflection in the mirror. She was beautiful, but her heavy makeup hid her natural beauty. Her sultry, slanted eyes, lined in black, admired her own reflection. She was adorned in beautiful jewels. She was not aware of her surroundings. She had no idea she was in the desert. She looked so comfortable at her vanity, as if she were in a luxurious dressing room without a care. The Lord desired his bride to look in, just a glance, but she did not. He began to cry. His tears created a cool, flowing spring of life-giving water that flowed past the bride at her left side. Green plants of all kinds started to grow near the edges of the spring. She did not see it. She was admiring her reflection in the mirror, seemingly preparing for her bridegroom. Then in the next painting, the Lord zoomed in on her heart, and he showed me that there was a massive clot in one of her arteries. It was causing all of her blood flow to back up and her heart to enlarge. I knew that it was only a matter of time before the heart of the bride exploded and destroyed not only her heart, but her entire body. She would implode. The Lord showed me that the clot and the mirror were functioning in the same way. The clot blocked her blood flow. And the mirror blocked her vision of him. The Lord still greatly desired her to look at him, to take a drink of his spring of cool waters. She couldn't see. She couldn't see the beautiful painting of the sunset in the sky or the thirst-quenching, life-giving, healing waters cried by her Savior for her. And more sadly, she couldn't see him. She continued to focus on her own reflection in the mirror. Her face showed that she was in deep thought. She obviously admired the life she built for herself. But maybe a part of her was fearful of losing it all. The burden of building an empire on a DIY foundation with no husband, the real possibility of a fall, was always imminent. A bottle of wine appeared on her vanity to her right. The fancy label read, Wine of the World. Her full glass sat next to the bottle. Tears fell like rain, again from the right corner of the painting, filling the spring until it rushed by the bride. A full stream of living water, but the bride couldn't see it, couldn't hear it. She had no idea. She reached for her glass of wine and drank. In the next painting, she had a few tears rolling down her face, mixed with black mascara that stained her cheek. Her heart is so close to exploding. She is so close to self-imploding. All she has to do is look at him. Her wine is spilled on the vanity and dripping down into the sand on the right side. The sand towards the bottom of the painting turns into a black line of emptiness, darkness, isolation that seems to be fed by the drops of wine. The river of life is flowing on her left. She's still looking in the mirror. But will she turn her head? Will she look at Jesus? Will she cup her hands and drink of his living waters? The springs have grown and the wind of the Holy Spirit gently tossed out the train of her dress that is now dipped down into the clear waters. He loves her so much. He's giving her every chance, every invitation. The water will reach her toes, her feet, her tattooed ankle, chained to the vanity. And she will look down and touch the water with her hand. Her wet veil will brush her arm. Her fingers will be soaked in living water. She'll reach up and touch her lips, and if her tongue moves to the water on her lips, then just maybe she will get a drop of living water that will flow through her body to every organ, every limb, every cell, and through her spirit. A renewing of the bride by the love and grace of the bridegroom. The tears of a husband who cries for his bride. I hear a rumble in the desert. It's the sound of revival springs rising. 